Hi, I'm Chef Gail Sokol and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're making a berry frangipan tart. Sounds super complicated, but it's not. It's easy and it's elegant looking and your friends and family will go, what? You made this? It's incredible. So on two previous videos, I made two different type frangipans, one using sliced almonds and one using almond paste. You can use either recipe for this particular tart. And frangipan, as you know, you have to bake. So we're going to bake this in a uh, 10 by eight inch pan, a rectangular false bottom tart pan, you know, with the fluted edges, super pretty, super fancy, but really easy. And we're gonna start with our crust because we're gonna make a crust first. And this is sort of a flaky pie crust. Uh, and we're going to let this chill for a little while before we line and fill with frangipan and then top with berries later. So in a food processor, I have one and a half cups of all-purpose flour, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and I'm going to just sort of whirl this around for two seconds just to get the salt evenly distributed. Nobody wants to bite into a salty piece of pastry. Not good. And then I have one stick of unsalted butter, super cold and cubed. All right. And we're going to process this. And I always put my, my uh, kitchen towel over because sometimes the flour woo, backs up at you and you get sort of a powdery face. So what you want to do is pulse it until you see pea-sized pieces of flour. Uh, I'm sorry, pea-sized pieces of butter. So the butter is going to get smaller and smaller. Okay, so I think we're there. And now I'm going to add a little acid. So a little bit of orange juice. If you don't want to use orange juice, you could use a little vodka, about a teaspoon, and a, or a little bit of apple cider vinegar. I find that works well too. This acid denatures the protein and will make the crust so much easier to roll out when we're ready. Then I also will add four tablespoons of icy water. And I've already made my ice water ahead. That's the first thing you should do when you make a flaky pie crust or any type of pie crust. Count with me, that's two. I'm gonna add four. You might need an extra one, but you never know until you make it. That's four right there. But I always make extra ice water just in case I need it. So I'm gonna put this over and you want it to gather into a ball. It's not gonna be super wet. You don't want it to be super wet, all right? All right, here we go. Here we go, now we're cooking. All right, so I always dump it into a bowl, all right, because then I can gather it without impaling myself, and we don't want you to impale yourself on that, that very sharp knife in the middle of your food processor. Just gather it, do not knead. All I have to do is gather very lightly. I'm going to move my recipe. And then I'm going to let this chill for a little bit. I have plastic wrap. I'm just going to let this chill. I'm going to wrap it, give the baby a little rest just to relax that gluten because we did mix it up. And then we'll be ready to bake it. We're going to bake the crust blind. That means we're baking the crust without any filling in it just yet. So I'm gonna to go to my fridge. I'm gonna leave it in here for maybe 30 minutes. You can even make this the day before if you wanna. Just leave it in your fridge until you're ready to go. So I let my dough, my pastry dough for my berry frangipan tart chill out a little bit in the refrigerator. Depends on how cold your refrigerator is. Um, you can leave it anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour to a few days. So I'm gonna flour my work surface. Now, I use an 11 by 8 inch rectangular pan. I think I said before 10 by 8. And there's many different types of pans that have uh, fluted sides that are false bottom. So use whatever you want. But this, it's a good size crust. So it's actually going to fill the bottom and the sides. So this is 11 by 8. I've sprayed it with nonstick cooking spray. And I put it on an aluminum uh, foil lined sheet pan just in case you know, you get any leakage or whatever, you just don't want it all over your oven. I've floured my work surface very well. 
and I'm going to start rolling it out. If your fridge is super cold, you may be ready in 20 minutes to go. And we're going to blind bake this and only for a short time, just to get the, the doughiness off. And then we're going to cover it with our frangipan and we bake it with our frangipan and we'll put the fruit on after. So I'm going for a rectangular shape because normally when you have a pie pan, it's round traditionally. And I am just going with rectangle because that is the shape of the day is rectangle. All right. So I'm just going to get this into a rough rectangle that I can fit in to my pan. And then I can just push uh, in the areas that are not totally there yet. So I'm going to, and this is a pretty nice crust, pretty sturdy, pretty good if you put in enough of your water. Now I'm going to flip it over because I want to get rid of some of the flour. So you take your pastry brush, just get rid of the flour. Just don't put it all over your floor. I used to have students that love flour and they would fling it everywhere. All right. So I'm just going to take my pan and see where we're at with that. We're actually pretty good. I'm going to get a little bit more this way because again, it is a three dimensional pan. Doesn't have to be a perfect rectangle. And then I'm just going to put it in half and I'm going to bring my pan over. All right. And I'm going to put the half mark halfway in and then I will adjust. All right. So I will adjust because we're going to have a little extra and you never want to pull on your pastry crust. And I've said this before because it'll cause it to shrink. So you're gently going to fit it in. You don't have to put your pinkies up. <laughs> I just put my pinkies up. So you just gently fit it in very gently. All right. And actually really nudge it into the, into the bottom and against the sides because that'll also prevent shrinkage. And then when you get there, just sort of flip the edges over, take your rolling pin and go over the edges. All right. And cut that, that excess off. You can also do it with a knife or your fingers. And if you want, you can actually save the rest of this crust for some little tarts or cover it with a little cinnamon sugar and bake it off for the kitties or the chef. That's fun too. So I've preheated my oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm just going to push this off. Now you could fill with frangipan directly without pre-baking this, but I want to make sure that my crust is done. And remember, it's not going to get much baking after this. It's going to have the frangipan in it. And if you see any area, see this little area here is a little thin. So I'm actually going to reinforce. Coming in with reinforcements, don't worry. So just take a little piece of your excess dough and push it in. Everything should be up to the top and pushed in. And then what I'm going to do is just take my knife and just make little holes. If you have a fork, you can do that as well. This is what I have. This is known as docking or stippling. Fancy schmancy baking terms. And it just means you're allowing the steam to escape. You don't have to do it on the sides because we are going to blind bake this. So we're going to put it on my sheet pan. I'm going to put a piece of parchment in here and I'm going to line it. Let me move my berries out of the way. And then I'm going to take some raw beans that have never been cooked and will never be eaten. Not in my kitchen. And I'm using them as pie weights. If you have pie weights, you can use them, but this is the cheaper way. Buy yourself two or three pounds of beans. These happen to be black beans and I've used them over and over and over and I store them in a big Ziploc bag or in a, you know, some sort of a airtight container. Just push it up the sides because we don't want any shrinkage and we're going to put it in our oven for about 10 to 15 minutes just to get it to set. All right, that's all we're doing. And then we're going to remove our beans, 375. So my beautiful tart shell has come out of the oven. I let it cool because you don't want to put uh, frangipan in a warm tart shell because the butter that's in the frangipan will melt right out. 
So this particular frangipan recipe is the one with almond paste. It's one of my favorites. And like I said, it's on the, on the video that you can watch. So I'm going to put some heaping spoonfuls of it. And you'll probably need most of it. You're not going to, you may not use all of it, but you should use the majority. And let's take an offset spatula and gently, because we don't want to tear our crust, you're going to spread it. And then it's going to go back in the oven at 375. So you're going to maintain your oven temperature for about 20 to 25 minutes until it's barely warm. It should be a little puffed because there's egg in it. And egg tends to hold air and puff a little bit when it cooks. And then once it cools down, we top it with our berries and a little bit of a jam glaze on those berries. You see where I'm going with this, right? It's gonna be spectacular. And it's really easy. Yeah, there's a little downtime where you have to let, you know, the pie crust chill. But you can do that ahead. Super easy to do. I've even made this pie, pie crust, put it in the freezer for a few minutes, uh, 20 minutes, and then literally baked it right then. I'm gonna use the whole thing which is between a cup and a half and two cups, all right? Depending on how big, like I said, this is an 11 by eight. If yours is a little bit smaller, that's fine. You can use a little less, or it might take a little bit longer to bake. But frangipan is a delicacy, an Italian delicacy. We're just, you don't hear people talk about frangipan very much. So it's sort of a treat, you know? Make sure it's even and level. All right, folks, back in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes until light brown. So my gorgeous frangipan tart, my berry frangipan tart, but it's not berry just yet, has baked. And look how beautiful, it's like light brown. And if you push on it after it's cooled down, it almost feels like a macaroon. It's sort of, you know, almondy and soft, but cooked through. So now I have some raspberries, fresh raspberries, and sliced strawberries, and I'm gonna start decorating. All right, so you can do whatever you want with this. You can do whatever you want, however you wanna decorate it. You can do two rows of strawberries, one row of raspberries, whatever you have more of, whatever looks good to you. Do not use frozen fruit, just use fresh. You can even do um, any combination, blackberry. Let me get a bigger, a bigger berry. Go for a bigger berry. All right, so I got that. And I think I'm gonna try to do two rows of the raspberry. So you're just gonna put your raspberries on and just alternate, make it pretty, do whatever you want. It's a rectangular uh, pan, so you really want to highlight that with rows. All right, I might do two rows of berries. And if you run out of berries, go for, if you like, you can do blackberries, you can do blueberries, you can do huckleberries, gooseberries. Oh, don't get me started. You can do any combo you want. Isn't that beautiful? And then we're gonna take some raspberry jam. Could be seedless, it could be with seeds. And I microwave it. I took about a, a quarter of a a quarter of a cup and I microwaved it till it got a little um, less gel-like. And I'm going to brush it over the top. All right. And it's going to be spectacular. Then you're gonna put it in your in your fridge. Whoops. And you're going to just let it come together and then you can unmold it and serve it to your adoring guests and family and friends. And they're going to say, oh, this is spectacular. But wait till you cut into it because it's like nothing you've ever had, frangipan. It just is going to go so nicely with all of our accoutrement. And these look like jewels, don't they? Don't they look like jewels? I love them. I love decorating. You can get the kids involved, get your friends involved, make them work for their meal. 
that's fine. Very elegant looking without a lot of fuss. I mean, come on, it really didn't take that much. It did not take that much to make this gorgeous thing, this gorgeous thing that we call a berry frangipan tart. And I think the fluted, the fluted part of our, of our pan just makes it that much better. If you don't have a fluted pan, you can still make this. You can use a springform pan because that is also false bottom. Anything false bottom would be best, unless you want to keep it in the pan. You can even do it in a pie pan if you want. Yes, I said that. You could do it in a pie pan. It just wouldn't come out of the pan. It would stay in the pan, all right? What are we up to? Are you watching? Are you paying attention? Raspberries, we're on a raspberry roll. All right, so raspberry, oh, that looks so beautiful. Look at it is lovely, is lovely. Oh, I don't like that raspberry. Let's get rid of it. I didn't like it. It's gotta be perfect to be on this tart. It's a good thing I aimed it right into the sink and it landed in the sink. All right, here we go. Oh, you know what? We're just gonna be perfect. We're gonna be perfect for another, another strawberry layer and then we're gonna be done. I don't like that one either. All right. <laughs> you know, you have to be a pastry chef and a baker has to be discriminating, right? All right, so now we're gonna go back to our berries. And this is our last one, folks, so you make it count. Make it count, get them in there, and then we're gonna layer, uh, we're gonna actually brush. We're gonna use our pastry brush. If you have, sometimes pastry brushes come and they look like feathers. So use whatever pastry brush you have. I'm getting some nice Nice strawberry slices. Oh, I think this is stunning. It is absolutely stunning. Okay, one more and we are done. There we go. Ah, oh, okay. Goodbye, berries. You've served your purpose and look what we're doing. We're gonna bring this up here. My brush. I have my warm, my warm jam. And if you don't like red raspberry jam, you could do whatever you want. Just be very gentle with it. Very, very gentle with it. After all, these are very gentle berries. And if you want to leave this part out, you can. I think it's pretty. And it just gives them a little sheen. Just a little sheen. Just a little shine. A little sheeny shine. They're just beautiful. So I'm going to continue glazing. And I do hope that you have enjoyed this video. I hope that you will start including frangipan in your inventory of recipes because it's so spectacular. And I hope you become a subscriber because I've got tons of videos. Until next time. P.S. I had to show you my berry frangipan tart cut. Look at that thing. It is glorious. You can see the frangipan filling. I'm going to put it on here. It looks doesn't even look real, it's so gorgeous. Look at this. You are going to have a beautiful slice of this and you are going to love it. So, happy baking, till next time.